Hello everybody, Shaka Lynx 1000 reporting for duty. Welcome back to another episode of the Brilliant Diamond Hoop Lock Nuzlocke. We um, obviously didn't really make much progress in episode 2, but to be honest, this is not like a full let's play in giving you tips on how to play the game. Even though nobody has ever done a hoop lock before, but... No matter. Um, there probably might be something I might have forgotten to explain that I had in my head, but I don't recall remembering now. Um, I think it probably, oh yeah, it's probably a case where if a Pokemon was to somewhat die, so like say, if my Shinx died, I technically would be allowed to catch another one, just not in the same area where I caught the first one. So, like, say, I went in Route 202, I caught a Shinx, it died, I can't just go straight back to Route 202 and catch a new Shinx there. No. Um... But I think the best way of coming up with this idea is um, you're not allowed to catch the Pokemon. But if there's a Pokemon that's in the same evolution family to it that you have not already obtained, then technically you can catch it sort of thing. So like say, if Shinx died, I can no longer use Shinx or catch a Shinx. But if I see... It's a bold form. I technically can catch that. Or do you think it's probably just better if I just don't use the entire Pokemon family? Like, I think it probably might be better if I just am not allowed to use the entire Evolution family. I think that's probably the better thing to do. To be truthfully honest. Like, what do you guys think? I mean, if I was doing a live stream with this, which honestly, I don't really do live streams. Uh, but if you guys happen to be watching this video, and you think, for a Nuzlocke, if a Pokemon dies, I am not allowed to use the entire Evolution family. Or... I can still use the Evolution family, but I'm just not allowed to catch the same Pokemon that died. What do you guys think? Shall I allow myself to catch the Pokemon again? Or... Should I just declare that I'm not allowed to use the Pokemon and its Evolution family full stop? Let me know in the comments below what you think. Because I think it probably would be better off if I just decide not to bother using any of the Evolution family again. As long as... Oh. Nearly made a mistake there. Um, I think it's probably wise for me to just not use any of the Evolution family for the rest of the Let's Play. If somebody in that Evolution family happened to die... Because it doesn't really show much of a challenge if it's like, oh, a Shinx died, but I can catch its evolved form easily and still use that. No, I don't think it should work that way. So I think if, if Shinx happened to die, I am basically not allowed to use it or any of its evolved form ever. Okay, we have a super effective move against the Starly. We'll just go ahead and get rid of that. Oh, nice. Usually I don't get first. 
Don't get cocky. Uh, I'm not being cocky, Barry. I'm just happy that I managed to get an additional effect on the very first turn of using a move, because usually I don't get that. But yeah, the re uh, actually, was, I was mentioning the whole concept. Actually, yeah, no, I remember. Okay, I was mentioning about why I decided to give the nickname Tigre to Shinx, but I didn't actually finish my sentence. The reason why I wanted to give the nickname Tigre to Shinx is not because of the fact that obviously, like, it is a lion, but it's more so the fact that. Um, there is somebody who I knew when I was watching TNA Impact Wrestling years ago, but because the fact they kept changing channels again and again and again and again, I just gave up hope watching it. And plus, when they had a wrestler called Kenny Omega uh, just run his mouth in the company and just decide to ruin the entire whole area... I just gave up watching it because of him just ruining the entire show for me. But they had a wrestler there called Tigre Uno. And I wanted to, like, think of Tigre. And his name came to mind. Uh, right, I'm going to switch out Petunia because of me being minus two defense. There we go. It's like he knew. It's like he knew. Alright. We'll go for a thunder shock. Okay. And then we'll switch Petunia back out. If he plans to use Leo again, um, that might lead me into a situation. Oh, God. Uh, right. So, 27. Okay, if I lost two more HP, I would have actually been in overgrow situation. Now I am. Oh, come on! Well, no matter. We got the win. Still no Pokemon death yet, but I'm not getting my hopes up because it could happen at any time. It will just be absolutely gutting if I end up losing a Pokemon that I absolutely care about the most. There we go. I'll run back and heal. There is actually a Pokemon in Route 203 that I would really love to try and catch. But the only problem is... Um, every time when I tried to hunt it originally in the Hooplock rehearsal on Pokemon Brilliant, uh, Shining Pearl, sorry, it just kept refusing to show up. And whenever I did eventually get it, it kept giving me one that was a bad nature. Like... It just didn't give me the one nature that I desperately wanted. And that Pokemon was Abra. And it kept giving me ones that was a minus special attack nature. Let's see if I can get it. If I can't, then not to worry. I just hope I'm not in the time frame where Starly is a 45% encounter. So I feel like I am. Because right now it is quarter to one my time, and I think that's usually around the time where mid. Yes, yeah, it is actually. Okay, I'll see if I can try and get one Abra, but if I don't get it, then there is actually an NPC in Oiberg City that can give you an Abra to trade. As long as you have a Machop. Okay, so we found 
a Starly, a Bidoof, and a Shinx. So that can only mean it's going to like re-roll it back to Starly again. Next encounter. Called it. Yeah. Okay, I'm not going to bother hunting for Abra in this route. I'm just going to get the uh, traded Abra. Because I don't really want to be spending the entire episode trying to hunt for an Abra. Right. Pick that up. I'll probably be best to put uh, my Turtwig in the lead, because... My Turtwig does need a lot of experience, to be honest. Well, it looks like I found them in JTV. This youngster's name is Michael, and he's using a Bidoof. <laughs> Um, I'm just being silly. I'm just being silly. Oh, dear. If you actually are wondering, like, the difference with Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl compared to the original Diamond Pearl Platinum, uh, Turtwig wouldn't originally learn a stab grass move until level 9. But the fact that this Turtwig was able to learn Leafage at level 6, which is actually a move that originally debuted in Generation 7. Okay, you just take a whole 1 HP. At least for one thing, um, I believe Tackle in this game is known to be 100% accuracy, but in Pokemon Platinum it's known to be 95% accuracy, which I don't like, personally, because of how often when you're using a move that has a 5% chance to miss and you actually miss, it's a bit silly. Why can I not stop yawning? Every single time I'm doing a Let's Play recording. Um, okay. So we find Youngster Michael. And this guy's called Youngster Dallas. So, is that like kind of having a reference to... MHATV originally born and lives in... Texas, because Texas does have a hometown called Dallas. I don't think that's actually where he lives, but um, maybe somewhere nearby. He lives in Dallas, Texas or something. Does this Cricketot not have an able... Uh, I'm guessing this Cricketot is not able to use Bide yet. Because I'm pretty sure it's either this trainer or the other trainer who uses a Cricketot that knows Bide and he always uses it. Right, another trainer over there. Uh, let's switch Bonsai for Rosebud. I oh, said not Bonsai, Petunia. If I kind of think of it, Petunia is actually a name of the character in Steel Bay Chronicles 2, isn't it? I think. Kind of reminds me of when I kept when I gave nicknames 
to my entire LP team on Pokemon Emerald having a striking resemblance to characters from the Xenoblade era as spreading rumor for my next Let's Play being Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition after Pokemon Emerald. Because I will definitely say, after finishing up my Let's Play on Banjo-Tooie, I was originally thinking of doing a certain Let's Play, but I was tied between three games. One was on the original Xbox, one was on the Wii U, and one was on the Switch. And I just couldn't decide which one to do. And if you were wondering, yes, I am playing a Switch game, but this wasn't actually the Switch game I had in mind at the time. But it did come to mind because I wanted to do a hooplock now before some random person decided to claim it as their idea before me. Because... Obviously, nobody has come up with the idea of a hoop lock before. And in case you're wondering, yeah, the reason why it's called a hoop lock is because hoop is basically another term for wheel. And I didn't want to call it a wheel lock because it'll be a case of spelling the word wheel and then lock having two L's right next to each other. It's just didn't seem right for me. So that's why I wanted to call it a hoop lock. Because it sounds better, in all honesty. But, uh, I don't know, like, if you were to come up with an idea of a Nuzlocke that was like this, would you have called it a Hooplock, or would you have actually called it something else? I'm sticking with it being called a Hooplock, but, if you're probably wondering, like, what actually made me want to do a Nuzlocke originally, I thought it was very fun and entertaining watching people doing randomizer Nuzlocke because it's like, oh, your starter Pokemon is between a um, a Rattata, a Lotad, and a Gorbis. Like, your starter Pokemon would be completely random instead of the usual Turtwig, Chimchar, and... No, the standard Turtwig, Torchic, and Mudkip, sorry. I was getting one starter Pokemon in Generation 3 mixed with somebody in Generation 4. Alright. Your Absol is only doing 1 HP of damage because you can't raise your attack stats, but do. But mine can because it's actually twice your level. Obviously, it's not going to be doing a lot of damage, but that's fine. I know I could just switch into a different Pokemon and actually finish it off quicker. But... Oh, you do have growth. Quick. Wait, I was able to learn gr Oh, never mind. You actually have Absol, Growth, Stunspore, and Worry Seed. My Badoo wasn't actually able to learn a new move by leveling up. My mistake. Oh, for a second, I thought I got two critical hits in a row.
Come on, there we go, Rosebud. Nice. In fact, one thing I do like about the Generation 8 games is that when you're talking to somebody, you don't just have to press the A button. You can push said L and said R as well. Okay. Right, I know this matchup. It has guts for the ability, and thankfully, I do not have Poison Point as my ability. Thankfully. So, as long as I don't use Stun Spore on it, I should be alright. Okay, you're lowering my physical defense by one, and then you're boosting the chances of you getting critical hits. That is definitely something to be feared of. Especially when I'm now minus two defense, but I'm faster than you. I'm plus one special attack, and it took three absorbs to knock you out. I think I think that um, his one attacking move was low kick. I don't. I think he also had tackle as well. Maybe I'm not sure. Right. Let's switch my party around a little bit. Um, I guess I could put Subat in. Uh, oh. Okay, high is IV physical attack, nothing wrong about that. Plus special defense, nothing wrong about that. But the minus speed nature can be a little bit of a hindrance. We'll work with it, we'll work with it. Yeah, I'm basically wanting to... Get a lot of experience, Frick. I was hoping for you not to have a Starly. Ugh, because I was wanting to use Astonish. Because I can't use Absorb on a Flying type. Boom. Okay, it was a bad idea for me to actually bring out Suba as my leading member anyway. If she was using two normal types. I think if you're playing Pokemon Platinum, she uses an Abbott on her team. I think. If not, then the boy that had the matchup does. Right. If we actually go along this grassy patch over here, there is an item ball over there for us to pick up. Which contains a repel. And... I think I'm going to end things off for this episode, everybody. So, I will see you guys in episode, I believe, four. I think it's episode four, uh, where we'll be going into the cave. We'll see you guys then.